Welcome back, everyone, to Textual Criticism of the New Testament, Part 7. We are getting into using the Nessalon 27 text, the critical edition. We've touched on this briefly in an earlier video, but I wanted to go back over it, uh, perhaps in a bit more detail, um, so that you can understand as you start to work through uh, text-critical problems how you can use the apparatus to do effective textual criticism. So we're going to look at the general principles of using Nesolon 27. We're going to take an example from Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 to 32, something that he does in his book. And then finally, we'll look at some of the symbols in the apparatus and how you can find uh, what they mean at a glance using Alon's book. So in the main text, there are symbols that are inserted into the text that indicate variations that appear in other manuscripts. The symbols can indicate that text is omitted, or it is added, or it is replaced. It, it can uh, also indicate that there is a varying word order with uh, a series of words. So there are all kinds of things that these symbols can indicate. Some of the symbols in the main text include a zero for an omission. That uh, little T-looking symbol indicates an insertion. And then if they want to indicate that more than one word is omitted, they will put a box at the beginning of a series of words and then uh, an angled slash at the end to say that from the box to the slash, all those words are omitted in other manuscripts. Of course, there are other symbols, but these are some of the common ones. So here we have a page from Nestle on 27. And you can see, so by way of quick review, this is the main body text of the critical edition. And this is the apparatus down here. And then if you look, if we go through, this little angle iron is a symbol. This is a, an omission symbol here. Here's another set of symbols here, and so on. So these are just symbols that are put into the text so that you can, you can see where there are variations. So let's go to a specific couple of examples from this particular page. I've enlarged the body text of verses 28 to 32 and the apparatus for the same verses. So if you look up here in the upper right-hand corner, you see that circle before the word chi, which means and. And what that is indicating is that if you go down to the apparatus, it's going to show you in verse 28, wherever where, where you see that circle, you're going to see all the manuscripts that omit the word chi um, in their manuscript. So if you come down here, there's that circle. The cross indicates that in the previous edition of Nesolon, so Nesolon 26, they actually did omit the word chi from their critical text. It's omitted in Aleph, the original hand of the scribe, Codex Sinaiticus, Uncial's L and Z, the old Latin E, FF1, and so on, Syriac and the Coptic. So all of these manuscripts omit chi. However, it shows the evidence that supports reading chi in the manuscript or supports the reading that's in the text. So Olive's second corrector on seals B, C, D, W, theta, and so on. And of course, the majority text shown by that M there toward the end uh, all preserve chi in, the, in their reading. So this is how you would differentiate which manuscripts have chi and which omit it. Another example we can take a look at is this little angle iron. This angle iron indicates that the word following is replaced in other manuscript traditions by a different word. So if you come down here to the apparatus, the word you can see there on the left, Deutero, Olive second corrector, B, C second corrector, L, Z, and so on, all of those manuscripts have Deutero as opposed to uh, hetero, and the you know this this tells you that this word is replaced 
in these other manuscripts. So there are many notes in the apparatus itself, um, and they can be uh, they can be confusing. So on pages 240 and following, Alan has put uh, a number of uh, explanations for what these notes are, little descriptions. So for example, uh, examples of notes that you'll see in the apparatus that he defines in the book in a very user-friendly way, PC, paucity, or paucity, a few. Uh, these are obviously Latin terms, uh, PM, per multi, a great many, rel reliqui, the rest. When you see these in there, it's indicating that, for example, if you see PC, it means only a few manuscripts have this. Uh, PM, uh, a great many manuscripts. If you see R-E-L-L, -L, it's the rest of the manuscripts have this. And There are many such notes uh, or little markings, and on pages 240 and following, he goes through and identifies what they are and gives explanations. So all of the notations that appear in the apparatus are explained on those pages. It's actually a very useful resource for knowing how to use, uh, for understanding how to use Nestle Law 27, both in the main text and in the apparatus. And as you start to do textual criticism of the New Testament, or if you're doing it now and you want to do it a little bit more precisely, this is a tremendous resource. Of course, it's not the only resource, but it's uh, one that I would highly recommend. So tomorrow we're going to start to look at Alan's 12 rules for textual criticism. And I think that as you begin to do textual criticism, you may not agree with all of them, and you may come up with a, or you may follow a different form of textual criticism, applying different sets of rules. Nonetheless, these are extraordinarily important to know, and I think uh, very important to practice personally. So stay tuned.